All right, so I want you to take me through your kitchen and tell me um, kind of why you bought certain things. Like, I bought this because someone told me it was really good. Right. Um, or I just like this a lot. Well, we'll or... just start here because this is okay. where I start my breakfast. And I have, um, I have ginger, green ginger tea in here. And I make a big pot of it because I feel like one bag really can make a lot more than one cup. Um, I have, I use cayenne pepper almost daily on almost everything that I can. Um, these are chia seeds. Oh, nice. Yeah, I put chia seeds on anything from like my fruit and yogurt to okay. actually salads. Um, uh, organic olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, my raw honey. Awesome. Um, this is... Uh, Oh boy, I forget the name of this tea. It's Pula tea. Very, very good. It's supposed to be helpful with cancer. And then, okay, here we go. Underneath here is what I got from IKEA. Okay. Which I know. Nonstick. I'm gonna say is not good. That's my one pan. I have one pan. I have one for liquids, and then this is my okay. saute pan. All right. So this is not great because when you heat it up. Um, the fumes get released in the air, and then you and and obviously you can't smell those. Exactly. I don't. I, I'm exactly. pretty sensitive nose, and I yeah. don't smell it. Yeah. Here's my fridge. Okay. Um, uh, do you take any supplements? Oh yeah, you gave me the list of supplements. Yeah, I have gabapentin, mm -hmm. which is to deal with the peripheral neuropathy from mm -hmm. the first round chemo. Yeah. And I was very lucky; it only happened in my feet because. When they first told me that I could experience neuropathy in my hands and it might be permanent, yeah, that was the first time I cried. <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> because was, I work with my like, hands, yeah, so exactly. um, and it's amazing, like almost losing the ability to walk. How much you realize that really impairs you, and I yeah. almost got a cane, but I couldn't find that one, one that was cool enough looking. Okay. <laughs> so I just pretty much walked close to like walls and things like okay. that. And this one is just the, the Doculase, which is a stool softener, which whenever I do get chemo, chemo I yeah. make sure that I take that because I... You, you know, get constipated. Yeah. Every month, every um, month. And then they had me on calcium because I had broken a, com a couple of ribs. Okay. And I kept asking them, now, are you sure that this chemo is not affecting my bones? And yeah. they said, no. And I'm thinking, how could it not? It affects you yeah, in your memory. Yeah, else, yeah. How did you break Well, them? one was running through an airport, okay. and another one was doing a pretty complicated yoga move. Right right under here. Under here? So I was balancing my torso yeah. on there, and then you lift your legs way up into the air, so uh -huh. your entire body is balancing, basically, yeah. on your rib. Okay. So then they put me on calcium, saying that I had osteoporosis, okay. which I don't. I was had my bone density tested, and yeah. one blood test, actually, they said, why... Why is there so much calcium in your system? Yeah. I basically take eight supplements. Okay. There, there could possibly be more. Um, I've got the Women Over 41 Daily. Okay. Cranberry Plus, which is good for your urinary tract and mm -hmm. also good for your blood pressure. Yeah. Vitamin D3, which a doctor had advised me was very important to take okay. if you have cancer. And okay. Again, we can talk about that as far as like people giving advice. Yeah. Zinc 50, which I heard, I read, like, you know, Dr. Google, okay. I read was, um, could uh, help your uh, white blood cell count. And okay. mine was being very compromised by the second round chemo. Mm -hmm. And iron. Okay. So, um, so pretty, pretty basic stuff. So I would really love to replace your, your nose. Yeah. I, I won't be sorry to see it and, go. Um, bye bye. <laughs> I would say give it to someone, but then you. I then think, I feel like I'm passing yeah, on this. That's this, how like, I feel. Yeah, I know. The lid. Wow, so, this is beautiful. And how do I cure it in the beginning? So what you do is you just you just put oil on them. Obviously to cook, you know, you you oil it and then you put in whatever you put in. And then you wash them, hand wash them, unfortunately. It doesn't go in the... Do you have dishwasher? No! no. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. So you wash them by hand, and then let them air dry, and then you just put a thin layer of oil. Do you have any children? No, I don't. No, and that's the choice. Are you happy about that? Yeah, I made that choice very early on in my life, and I uh, just from what I wanted to do in my life and how I believe that if you do have children, they deserve a lot of care, and I yeah. just I, I wanted to do other things. I mean, this is something that you can kind of hand down to your, you know, uh, your, your, I was going to say your grandkids, but <laughs> <laughs> your, your nieces.
nieces and nephews. Yes, exactly. Uh, or uh, whatever. This is like something like uh, you put in your will almost, but um, this lasts for like hundreds of years. Yeah, no, I know this brand. And so. then uh, you got a, a book as well. I would walk down the streets thinking, how am I going to break this to my friends and family? I just, you know, do I want to? Well, of course I have to. And I have this debate in my head. How do I do it? How do you do it gently? That's it's just really... And then I thought, okay, just say it. And I thought, well, I don't know. And so I had to walk down the street practicing the words, ovarian cancer, ovarian cancer, advanced ovarian cancer. So um, after practicing for some days, then I finally, I think I called my parents and then my sisters and then my friends and um, and everyone was really kind of oh my you know and I don't think anyone at that point had any idea quite how deadly this disease is and I did was doing my research and kind of going wow this really is serious and I was went headlong into surgery so fast that it was in, in a way it was good because I didn't have a lot of time to just think about it it was kind of like let's go let's do this get this out of me and um, and I woke up from the surgery, and my mother was standing next to me. <laughs> so um, and she stayed with me for a month, and it was great because I didn't really need taking care of, but it was the moral support of having somebody there. You know, because at, at that point, there's really nothing you can do. You're, you're going through a major healing process, and you're about to enter into this big scary period of the chemo, which I had decided to do because it was so advanced. And one of my sisters did ask me, well, you know. What, did you think about doing any alternative kind of cures or remedies? And I said, you know, at stage 3C, you just kind of dive in and say, help me.